So I have a first generation battery on my Waydo, which is not charging. And if I try and start it, I get no tones and you notice the red light. So let's try and uh, diagnose this and see if we can fix it. Obviously this is a battery. It contains enough energy to uh, burn your house down, do serious damage. So you're warned, be careful. The tools you're gonna need is a razor blade, a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench, and likely a multimeter. So let's get this thing cracked open. So first we need to peel back the non-slip and expose the cover screws. You notice this is about how far they're in. They're spaced about every um, inch and a quarter roughly all the way around the perimeter. So being very careful not to cut yourself, just start peeling this back and exposing the screws. Now if you're careful and you don't rip these off, uh, we should be able to just push those back down and reseal the uh, cover when we're done. This is the most tedious part of the job, so I will not record the whole thing. I'll just try not to cut myself and slowly make my way around. I'm making my way across, and what I found is just rolling up the edge with my finger to the extent possible really works well. And then working my way back, slowly peeling and exposing without ripping. And I found I've only had to use the razor blade um, when it starts to tear. So uh, about halfway done, you can see what the screws look like. And uh, I need to just continue patiently working my way around. All right, so next um, we need to remove these cover screws. This is my 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And there is a total of 36 of these screws across the top. And then there's five more uh, different types of bolts that come in through the bottom of the handle. So we need to carefully remove 36 of these without stripping the unit. So we'll finish getting all of our battery deck lid screws out and place those carefully where we won't lose them. Now, the only thing holding the battery compartment on right now are five bolts in the back handle. So carefully, we will flip it over. Now we have five remaining bolts. And with this final one, our battery compartment should be ready to open. Notice, as you notice, two bolts are longer than the other three. So the two long bolts go here close to the base, and the three short boat bolts go across the top of the handle. Now we go carefully flip our battery compartment again and slowly break the seal. I actually heard a little bit of air escape, kind of like a Tupperware. And now the only thing holding it together are our connections, our wires inside. So we'll take a look at those next. So I've cracked open the compartment. You can see the main battery and therefore most of the weight is in the back. And our connections are up front. So I'm going to reach in here and disconnect the red wire. I'm going to reach in from the other side and disconnect this blue wire. And then there are several wires on the circuit board. I will have to disconnect. So I might get a um, small screwdriver or the likes to reach in there and disconnect those. But I'm going to need my hands and I'm gonna to have to find a working flashlight uh, to get that done and, and disconnect the black
Now I'll come up here and disconnect these quick connects. There's one. And I need to get the other one, but I'm underneath both hands, so let me put the camera down for a sec. Managed to pop off that last connector. Uh, I'll give you a look at the battery compartment here. I'm thinking now, maybe I should have flipped this over and um, taken it apart with the tray up instead of the lid. That may have proved easier, um, so I'll try that next time. I think I'm going to very carefully turn this upside down. Now, with the weight of the battery in the bottom, it's a little easier. It looks like I still have one connection here. So, I disconnect that, and we are done. So, uh, you can take a better look at these connections. So, to get them off, I put pressure here that lifts this little lid and lets me pull the connector out gently. What you do not want to do is accidentally rip these out from your quick connect. So these are the two quick connects I need to get undone. I accidentally also popped the one off for the power switch. So I'll push that one back in. All right. Now we will diagnose it, see if we can find any trouble. First thing we all always look for is any loose connections, any obvious damage to the circuit board, etc. Voltage check, I'm on DC power. Uh, let's see, so here's positive, negative. This runs through the battery management system. So this is likely a low voltage. So we have 2.3. To check the voltage in the battery, I should be able to take off from this connector and we're looking at 55.25 a couple volts low for this battery pack um, full charge I believe would be 57 so I don't see any obvious loose connectors um, but I'll keep on running through see if I can spot anything obvious and if not then likely the culprit is our battery management board and um, if I can't repair it, uh, find an easy repair, might be out of luck for this board, this battery. All right, so I also want to check all of these connections, make sure everything's tight, no obvious problems. Now these seem much looser than they should, so I'll probably see if I can secure these at all. Loose electrical connections is never a good idea. I also noticed some corrosion down inside the box. So if you look down in here, if you can see it, uh, it had, definitely has some corrosion maybe starting on the board. So I'll hit that with some cleaner, if nothing else. All right, just gonna clean these up a bit. You know, I figured this thing's already a 60 pound paperweight, so as long as I don't burn down my house, I'm not going to cause any additional damage. So we'll try and clean up those connectors, and um, once that dries, we'll tighten everything up and see if it made any difference. I'm going to start to put this back together. I uh, notice here is the rubber gasket, and due to the corrosion on the screws, um, I do have some. Uh, material uh, in this gasket that can cause a problem with water tightness so uh, I'm going to carefully clean that out and then clean the corresponding lip of the battery box to make sure I have a nice tight seal all right so I'll start reconnecting my wires First the black and white, not that the order should matter. Just need to make sure that the clip is on the outside. Next our four connector. 
make sure they snap down in. Next, I will connect my red from the battery. And finally, the black from the battery. All right, I'll make sure nothing else gets in the way. Make sure everything's tight. All right. So now I want to carefully put the cover straight down in the proper position so that that water sight seal is correct. Flip it over. And now we will start putting in the screws. I think I'll put in one at each corner just to keep it tight and then test it out with the board to see if it works. All right, so I'll insert my four corner screws. Not super tight. Just enough so I don't have to worry about anything shifting in the battery pack. And we'll see if we made any progress with the board. So it looks like we got a good seal. Everything should be in place. So let's give it a try. All right, so that's very interesting. So I'm not sure exactly what I did, whether it was tightening up the terminals, uh, cleaning the board, but it looks like the battery is working again you know it's tough when we don't come with a uh, solid conclusion as to what was causing the problem but electronics are often like that but you can hear the tones the tones means that the battery is connecting with the bluetooth and the mast so that's a great sign i'll grab my controller and see if our propeller will turn oh beep you here means that the uh, board is not sensing the Bluetooth from the controller. So we turn the controller on and sure enough that beeping stopped. Unlock the controller and we have uh, the propeller working. So that is a great sign. That our way to battery is operational again all right so i'll go ahead and button up the rest of those screws so um as we start to tighten this since this is a waterproof gasket what i'll do is i'll tighten it um try and tighten it equally going around the perimeter so i'll put in here 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 and then continue to work that pattern all the way around the battery so the cover gets tightened uh, and stays flat as it comes down and that will uh, decrease the um, tendency for our rubber gasket and seal to leak all, right. all my screws perimeter screws are back in so I will carefully reattach the um, non-slip cover I didn't damage it too badly taking it off and I think uh, you can actually um, Waydo will send you a replacement non-skid cover for the battery uh, they have done that for me before so I know it is possible in fact I have a spare one in the closet that maybe I'll uh, eventually replace this one with so all that's left is to take our two long bolts and our three short bolts and finish these up then we will be ready for our last test all right so let's try this out one short push one long press 
We have the tones and we're great. All right, looks like we have a, a good battery again.